The next element in the mortgage process I want to talk about is commitment. And I'm talking about it second, but it's not clear when in the whole pipeline process a commitment takes place. By a commitment, I mean that there's a firm, quote, on the interest rate, all the fees, including any upfront points, and so on. So the borrower knows exactly what they're going to pay. That's what a, that's what a commitment is uh, for these purposes. And of course, the borrower would like that as close to the beginning of the process as, as possible. The borrower would like to get that at the point of application. But the originator, who may not be funding the loan, who may end up selling the loan, may want to push this as far back as possible to settlement. To write the very last minute, here's the borrower sitting there uh, at the settlement table, getting ready to close on the loan, and the lender says, oh, surprise, here's some fees you didn't expect, and so on. So in between, there's this process here, which I'll just draw a little arrow, a good faith estimate. where the lender, uh, which might happen again uh, just a few days before settlement, or it might happen earlier in the process, where the lender uh, gives an estimate of, of their best estimate of the, the rate, fees, points, and so on. But uh, it's, it's really kind of scary in, uh, that the fact that the borrower wants the commitment early uh, and the lender wants it late. One of the things that will happen is that the lender will ask for a commitment fee and in exchange for that fee they will allegedly make a commitment earlier, much earlier than settlement, maybe even before the good faith estimate. Um, whether that works is not clear. It's not clear it's not always clear what is binding when the when the borrower pays a uh, when the borrower pays a fee. It could be an application fee or a commitment fee. So if the borrower pays a commitment fee, if they pay a commitment fee, then in principle they're committed. The, if the lender approves the loan, the borrower has to take the loan at settlement or forfeit the commitment fee. Often the commitment fee is pretty small relative so that if the borrower has any kind of uh, <coughs> sort of second thoughts or finds a better uh, mortgage offer, it's often worthwhile for the borrower to just forfeit the commitment fee. So it's not a, it, it isn't really uh, big enough to, to bind borrowers. Uh, it, it may be, it, the, but the intent is to uh, convince the borrower to stop shopping at that point. Um, but the other thing is, what does that commitment fee mean? Uh, does it absolutely guarantee the rate? or does it guarantee a, a good faith effort to keep that rate? I'm sure that there's you know, different fine print in different, uh, in different contracts at that point. Um, again, the main point is that, again, this conflict with the borrower wanting to know exactly what their rate and fees will be here. Now, why can't the lender right up here give a firm commitment? And sometimes they do. Um, but Traditionally, one of, the, one of the problems they have is suppose interest rates move. So, so you commit to, let's say, a 4% uh, a mortgage, or you want to commit to a 4% mortgage here. If the process of getting to settlement takes time, and it could just be that uh, 
the house isn't available for occupancy for two months, or it could be that the loan application process takes time. It takes time to assemble all the, the appraisal and all the documents and so on. It used to take a lot of time. Now it's, it's taking less. But in between, the t in any case, however long it is, between the time that the person first applies and the time of settlement, interest rates could have moved. It's a, let's say it's 4.25%. And now if the lender is committed, if the originator is committed to a 4% rate, they're going to actually have to sell that mortgage at a loss and take a loss. So that... Uh, so that gives rise to the originators wanting to t get a firm commitment ahead of time. So they may, uh, at the point when the originator wants to make a commitment, let's say here, they will take out a commitment <coughs> with, with someone who's funding the mortgage or someone to whom they're going to sell the mortgage. And they'll take out a commitment uh, as of that's good up until this date. So that way, the originator doesn't have to worry about rates moving from here to here. That'll be the problem of the um, of whoever's funding the mortgage, let's say Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae or somebody. Uh, so that solves the originator's problem in that sense, but it all but it creates a problem, another problem, which is that suppose the lo loan falls through between here and here. Suppose that something happens where it, it turns out the borrower is not really qualified for the loan, or suppose that interest rates fall and the borrower um, is um, just decides not to go through with the loan. So now the lender has taken out a commitment and they're going to have to sacrifice something. Maybe they paid a fee for that commitment and they're going to have to sacrifice the fee. So there's um, so this process of commitment, uh, there's no sort of perfect uh, way of doing it so that nobody is at risk. If the borrower is not at risk, then chances are <coughs> the originator is going to be somewhat at risk during this time. Um, and if, But if the originator is not at any risk, then the borrower is going to be somewhat at, at risk. Uh, and there are all sorts of things that can happen along the way so that um, the borrower, again, wants to have a commitment as early in, in the process as possible. The originator wants to have it as late in the process as possible, and to some extent that conflict uh, can't be resolved to everyone's satisfaction.